But sadly, India, around this juncture, were making rather heavy weather of their test commitments. The batting on paper was probably the best in the world, but the ineptitude in bowling made it difficult for the Indians to dismiss an opposition twice in a match. Besides, when India under Kapil Dev landed in England in 1986, it was the first half of the summer, always the bane of Indian cricket. Life is suddenly better. The opening batsman who's on 99. There it is. A splendid innings. Well deserved reward for Graham Gooch. One of his better innings in Test match cricket. It's his sixth Test hundred. Now though he has to face Chetan Sharma. The man who destroyed the middle of the England order. Oh, oh, oh. He's gone. So it's Chetan Sharma again. His fourth wicket. But there'll be lots of applause for Graham Gooch, who has held the England innings together. No doubt about that. Roger Binney mightn't have been having such a good match so far. He's made up for it there by knocking over England's second top scorer, Derek Pringle. For 63. That's a fine performance from the Indian bowlers and fielders to bowl out England for just 294. The Englishman, I suppose, will be happy to have got that far after the middle order collapse, the fine partnership between Gooch and Pringle getting them on the way, and today Ellison getting into double figures, but Dilly failing to do so, and Edmonds 7 not out. The bowlers for India were dominated by Chetan Sharma, 5 for 64 from 32 overs and 10 maidens, 3 wickets to Roger Binney. I thought Kapildev could have kept himself on, but unselfishly gave Binney the chance to pick up wickets towards the end. Kapildev had one, Binney three, and Maninda Singh, the left arm spinner, bowled in splendid style with very cold fingers, 30 overs, 15 maidens, and one for 45. And getting a wicket. Well done, well bowled, and the two spinners working together has come off for David Gower. Been good tactics and very well bowled by both of them. Not just Phil Edmonds who took the wicket, but John Embury at the other end as well. shot, an explosive pull shot from Dilip Vansaka. There it is. Tip and run. Vansaka has made another hundred. And those runs came out of a total of 342. Each of the two last wicket partnerships added 39, a tremendous bonus for India. Karen Moray making 25 and Meninda Singh six, and he batted for over one hour. The England bowling, they stuck to it well. The feeling was quite good. Dilly took some stick, but he also bowled with great penetration at times. 34 over, seven maidens, four for 146, three to Pringle, and one each to the other three bowlers used. Embury bowled particularly well, I thought. Oh, that must be out. And that's fine bowling by Kapildev, who tried plenty of variations during that over experimented with the short ball and the catch 
arriving safely in the hands of Mohinda Amanat in the gully. So Tim Robinson goes. Confident appeal, and Gucci has gone. That's beautifully bowled. And I think Gower knew instantly he was gone. That seemed to me to come up the hill. A beautiful piece of bowling. Quite an outstanding performance from Kapil Dev this morning in his eighth over. He's just taken his third wicket. Beautiful straight for four. Oh, that's a nice reply from Mike Gatty. Oh, he's done well this match in Chetan Sharma. Five in the first innings, and now he's taken the England top scorer. And that's not nearly as many as David Gower would have preferred. I reckon he would have wanted something around about the 250 mark to set India a proper target tomorrow. 19 to Richard Ellison, and then the struggle at the end for Embury, Dilly and Edmonds taking up time as well as trying to score runs and uh, only 172 runs scored in the day. Kapil Dev, the Indian skipper, will be delighted by his own bowling figures there, 4 for 52 and also by the match position which shows India in a very, very strong state. That's the end. Bowl him. Beautiful bowling. The ball coming on with the arm. And Bengsaka completely deceived. And there'll be a scampering around in the Indian dressing room. Because from here on in, this match will be won or lost as much in the mind as anywhere else. So the hero of the first innings, Dilip Bengsaka, makes a complete misjudgment. And Phil Edmonds brings the ball on with the arm, through the gate, and over they go. What a way to finish. A magnificent six from Kapil Dev. It's his first test match victory as captain. The first time India have beaten England at Lords. There's a better shot. There's a lovely free swing of the bat. Doesn't matter that uh, this ground is slightly on the small side. You could have had a full-size ground. That would have uh, been way over the top. Ben Sarka using the first shot as a sighter, this time getting right to the pitch of it. Gatting has gone, Roger Binney has struck 38 for four now. Gatting out for 13, Lamb not out 10. And the England captain absolutely livid with himself for playing that shot. Very wide. I mean, the same bowler like uh, Roger Binney can be more affected here than back home in, in India. Oh, another fine shot by Pinksaka. And there it is. A splendid century for Dilip Pinksaka. I'd mark that down as a better 100 than the one he made at Lords. Much more difficult conditions here on a pitch of variable bounce. So to win the game at this moment, England would need 407. If they achieve that victory, it would be the highest fourth inning score to win in the history of the game. Meninder Singh has got it up in the air. Gatting's the man under it and takes it safely. The innings is over. 237, India all out. So England need 408 to win in this second Cornhill Test match. If they do it, it'll be the greatest achievement in the history of Test cricket.
On with the arm, and that's out. On with the arm, beat Pringle, caught on the back foot. Completely beaten in the air. And I think Maninda Singh will uh, have deserved that. He's beaten the bat three or four times this morning. And so Pringle goes. Take another look at Derek Pringle. Again, the close fielder there, just stopping the batsman from coming forward. It's amazing how it just gets into the mind that you can't push out. And he's run out. Graham Dilly called for the single. There was hesitation. Dilly looks astonished. But there's no question the ball broke the stumps just before Dilly got his bat over the crease. So there is the stump being broken now, and Dilly is yeah, about nine inches short. Very sad day for England, all out for 128. Mike Gatting played some lovely strokes out there this morning, but I'm afraid it was a lost cause. 31 not out, and the whole of the bottom part of the order, the last six players, none of them able to reach double figures. 128 all out, and the bowling figures are naturally quite impressive. Kapil Dev, again, bowled without a great deal of luck. Two for 24 in 19 overs. Madan Lal, no wickets. Maninda Singh. Four for 26 from 16.3 overs and six maidens. Binny, two for 18, didn't bowl today. And Ravi Shastri came on at the end. One for 21 in 10 overs and three maidens. And India beat England by 279 runs. The boys and the team much more free when they come outside of India. And uh, they play, I think, uh, everybody again contributed very well. Mainly, I would pick a couple of players like the Levin Sarkovs, one who played extremely well throughout the series. And uh, then I have to say about uh, Maninder Singh, he done extremely well. Top of Chetan done extremely well. We never ever expected a result from Chetan will give such a, a marvelous uh, performance. And uh, I think it was a more experienced and youth team, so we get together and uh, it was everything coming in our way. India then winning that series 2-0 and in the most emphatic But sadly, India around this juncture were making rather heavy weather of their test commitments. The batting on paper was probably the best in the world, but the ineptitude in bowling made it difficult for the Indians to dismiss an opposition twice in a match. Besides, when India... Oh, oh, he's gone. So it's Chetan Sharma again. His fourth wicket. But there'll be lots of applause for Graham Gooch. It's his sixth test hundred. Now, though, he has to face Chetan Sharma, the man who destroyed the middle of the England order. Ninety-nine. There it is. A splendid innings. Well-deserved reward for Graham Gooch. One of his better innings in Test match cricket. Under Kapil Dev, landed in England in 1986. It was the first half of the summer. Always the bane of Indian cricket. Life is suddenly better. The opening batsman who's 